panelists and they will stop and be watching you. They won't move anymore. Yeah, Waroka, I'm trying to explain something here. Our people, APC was counting on the boycott to rig the election in such a way that Atiku and Dobi could not contest it. Understand this. And the blackmail came that we are doing this thing for selfish reasons. Our elders kept calling me one after the other. And I said, I want terms and conditions met. And they were met. If I did not call off that very boycott, IPOB would have been dead by now. They will say, you know, they call me boy. They'll say that boy doesn't listen to anybody. <laughs> we don't want anybody to fail and they will blame IPOB. That is how our people are. I understand them very well. I spent 15 years studying the psyche of an able man. 15 years. If we did not call it off, we'll be dead by now as a movement. As simple as that. We wanted to. Okay. As simple as that. If I ask our people to sit at home and they sit at home, and on one occasion they're asking me to do something and I refuse. If I am start home, they'll say no. That's how they are. We cannot afford to lose their goodwill. You are all Republicans, you paid. This is the first meeting I have ever seen. Well attended, the hall is full. And they actually paid to come in. Yes. I've never heard it before. I'm telling you, I'm being honest with you. It's not happened before. Another. I am being honest with you. It has never, ever happened before. Will you be here if you don't follow this message which I preach? No. Did anybody force you to come? No. No. That is how we are. Anything I'm doing from today onwards, I will take the views of all of you here into account before I do it. Oh. Because I'm not doing it for myself. There are some things you can see which I cannot see. You know, when elders keep calling you, calling you, calling you, one lot, I don't do, don't do, don't do. And you say, no, I must do it. You know what they used to say to me? This was what Ujuku did, that he failed. They will go to Obi and I say, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I listen to people. I, I keep saying it on Radio Biafra. If I hold a viewpoint and your argument is superior to mine, I will drop my own and I will take your own. And in the fullness of time, three and a half years, you will understand that us calling off the boycott accelerated the coming of Biafra. Thank you very much. The next person is uh, Lawrence Onokuba. I P O B. Ohamadike, even my clients. I mean, your legal team, Muna, if I hear you for for two years, we've been battling it. From magistrate court to federal high court to appeal court to to ECOWAS court, we are still there, and we will get justice. But my question this evening is: You made mention of 
we lobby in our MPs for those of us that are in Canada here. And I want to know, because I believe this is a movement. We have to utilize help from everywhere. What efforts can we make to get people into that government? I don't want to call zoo or anywhere, but to get people into that government that we can work from, from within. If we have enough senators, enough House of Reps, even we can lobby and have governors. I think and I believe they will work from inside while we work from outside exactly. and we will get to where we are exactly. going faster. Thank you. Thank you, Barrister. I'm also very happy with your question because it ties in with the last one our brother asked. We wanted to prove to people that your PVC is useless. It is. Also, the moment, the reason why Ibazo is still there is because IPOB is against him. So, I was, I, Fulani Ainek decided they must put him there. That's the way it goes. When we boycotted Anambra elections, less than 3% voted. They wrote the figures and said it is, uh, is it 28 percent or so. Buhari got three percent of the vote in Abia State in 2015. Jubril got 28 percent. Is that possible? Impossible. The zoo is terrible. Nothing works inside the zoo. If you trust your PVC, it they will just wait for you. You go and do all your campaign, do your voting. They quietly sit down with their intellectuals, the professors, the VCs, and they falsify the figures. And they give it to whoever they like. That's what they do. The same person that you are going to vote in, once they get wind of it, that person has already failed. Or you'll be disqualified. And that's the end of you. You can't do anything about it. Uh, that is why we say we must destroy the system and build Biafra because there's no hope in it. Thank you. The next person is Theo Nwogu. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions. The first one has actually been answered, and that has to do with uh, the elections. And uh, because we are wondering when you made that statement about they have agreed to our request, and I, I wanted to highlight those two words, they and agreement. I was going to ask who are the they and what was the agreement. Uh, the second question has to do with the membership of IPOP. Right here in Canada, we have so many Igbo organizations. Let me just say that. And these organizations are not automatically members of IPOP. IPOP is a separate organization and individuals are supposed to register individually into this organization. Is there a way that we can change that dynamic whereby the membership of IPOP is made easier for group organizations. And we have done that before with some of these organizations whereby we have a kind of group membership and affiliation because the people we are looking at here are not just IPOP. You know, understand that. IPOP don't even from, you know, a quarter of the people here. So how can we increase the membership to include almost every Igbo person or every Biafra? Thank you. First of all, there is an agreement and at the right time, as I keep saying, because you know me, I don't lie. Now my class, I don't have any need for it. I will release it. But I don't want to compromise on you, but that's what is happening now inside the zoo. There are some things I can you have to forgive me, there are some things I cannot make public. Right. Yes. Right. It's classified information for now, but it will be released. I assure you. 
Hold it against me if I don't, but I will at the right time. Regarding membership, I stand to correct you that we are all IPOB. Everybody is. Everybody is an indigenous person of Biafra. Yes. Collectively, we are indigenous people of so you earn automatic entry into IPOB. But the thing is that there are some things you have to go through when you come into the movement. What it means is that there is this body of nation called IPOB, which a group of people are pushing forward, piloting a movement towards freedom. If you want to leave the crowd and come and be one of those at the front, pulling everybody together, it takes something. You have to be on that oath. And let me tell you what the oath does. You will not betray us. That is number one. If not for the oath we are under in IPOB, by now our enemies would have destroyed us completely. I'm telling you. But arrest after arrest, killing after killing, we are still marching forward. Because we are under sacred oath to restore Biafra. Or we die restoring Biafra. Anybody, let me put it this way. Anybody who doesn't want to come forward to join IBOB, I have reason to question that person's parentage. Thank you. Um, the coordinator of Montreal just informed me they'll be driving all the way back to Montreal, and up to 15 of them. And so we're looking at time also. Uh, the number of questions we could take, they think it's rude working out on the uh, uh, So, um, just bear that in mind. So one of the ways you can help us is ask a question with just one question, not multiple questions. Um, at some point, we will have to review the number of people. Um, but for now, I'm going to call on Kenny. He's the proprietor of GBKMFN, a radio station here, to ask his question. He's also a media man. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be in this gathering today. I've learned a lot. Uh, my question, I'm going to be brief. If given the opportunity, will you be willing to sit with Nigeria on the round table for a peaceful discussion, given what the, uh, the graph has gone through? Thank you. As long as that discussion is to agree where the boundaries will be, then I'm open to it. <laughs> um, next person is Tina Take. One family. Good afternoon, sir. I'm so privileged to see you today physically. Uh, my name is Tina Takem, and I'm from uh, English Cameroon. Wow. 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 Cameroon. But I say. I'm an Amazonian. Wow. Sir, may you live long? Yeah. I may Biafra have their independence. Yeah. I want to say that from a very young age, I remember my grandfather telling me that during the Biafra war, a lot of evil people came into English Cameroon, Ambazonia, and we were by their side. In fact, I grew up, went to school, I have Igbo classmates, we have Igbo market, we have Igbo quarter, 
My question that is pushing me to talk to you today, sir. When our leaders came to Nigeria to plan, because we realized that all the democracy from these white people is fake democracy. So we decided to take our destiny by force. Because independence, you cannot wait for people to give you independence. You take it by force. That is what we are doing right now. And our own Zulu, stupid, I don't know how to qualify him, animal of a president, he's on his knees. Because even the most little children know their identity. They are happy to tell you at any second of the day, I am an Amazonian. I am no longer a Cameroonian. That is what I am missing in our Biafran community. Wow. Wow. Most of us sitting here, in this country, we have used IPOB to take our something. To collect our something in our pocket. It's IPOB. But when you call for a meeting, they are not here. So, as an African, I am feeling like we are losing it. Mr. Gwari, no, no, Mr. Jibril, what? I don't know. This Fulani, Ziausa, he had the audacity to catch our leaders and send them back into Cameroon. So, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about Amazonia? I, 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 sometimes I think, I want to know your thoughts, sir. I want to know your thoughts because I know that you are in this field for a long time. I think the first thing we need to do right from home, because from Canada on the TV, I can watch your, 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 your speeches, I can be inspired, I know who I am, I know what I stand for. But what are we teaching the new children at home? I think we should start by telling these children who they are. Because I think the media has brainwashed them to forget that these are Biafra children. Biafra has suffered a lot. You people have lost a lot to even have a lukewarm attitude. We need to take the independence by force. That is my opinion. Do I need to respond to that? Yes. I think it's very clear, isn't it? Yes. I'm actually very happy. Maybe I should um, take permission from my wife to take her with me wherever I go. So she'll be speaking to people. When I go, she will talk to our people. We don't know the meaning of freedom. We don't understand it. We think because we fought a war and lost, because of that we should be slaves forever. That was the attitude of the slaves they brought to this part of the world. That is the reason why a black African is the only domesticated animal in the history of humanity. It's the truth. You may not like it, but it's the truth. Only an African man allowed himself to be trained like a farm animal. Because he lacked dignity and honor to appreciate that some things are better than life itself. My dear sister, I am part and parcel of the Ambazonian movement all the way from London. I have spoken to some of your leaders, but um, I'm going to do a program in Chicago and a lot to be revealed. Somebody mentioned uh, Niger Delta South South they went and duped the Amazonians, took money from them, and did nothing. I was expecting them to rise up and campaign for the release of the leaders of Amazonia when Zhu captured them. The mistake that they made from Amazonia was to travel to the northern part of the zoo. They should have come to Biafra land. We have protection would have been provided for them. I have spoken to their leaders, as I said, and they are part and parcel of what we are trying to accomplish. That nations must emerge from the colonial con contraptions built by the Europeans. Because some of you don't know one simple logic. When I give you a name, I control you. 
That was why Muhammad Ali changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. Most of the very conscious African Americans, when they were freed as slaves, took up African names or took up not African names, but um, should I say Islamic names. The fact that a white man created Nigeria, listen carefully, makes you his property forever and ever. As long as you preserve that name, Nigerian. You are lower than an animal. Simple logic. Common sense. Look at India. After their independence, they changed the names of their cities to what they know it to be. You're telling me that a white man can come from Europe, go to Africa and say, you, 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 from today, your name is Nigeria. And you stupidly and foolishly stand up to say, I am a proud Nigerian. There's something wrong with your brain. Half of Yoruba people are in Benedetto. I said half. Yoruba can make a very strong nation. A Yoruba and a Rudua nation. Why are you fighting and dying for the boundaries drawn by a white man? I'm asking black people. That shows you're inferior. And that is what Biafra has come to change. They may not like it, but it is going to happen. Biafra is going to be free. And Ambazonia will be free as well. My apologies to Ikech Kundichi. Actually, it was an oversight. Uh, can you please come and ask your question? IPOB, one family. IPOB, one family. My question is this. Marzen, I'm going to come to Canada. I want to know what you are doing to tell some of our youths to tone down their voices on social media. We have some genuine Yoruba people who really want us to have our independence. But some of our youth are very, very vulgar. They will attack you when you ask them simple questions. They will insult you. I have nieces that are Yoruba. My senior sister is married to an German. I could not see myself insulting. We, we should play, apply what is called diplomatic, intellectual debate. Fight with Yoruba intellectually, not being insulted. I've seen two Yoruba here that are supporting our cause. What are you doing to tell our youth to take it easy? Very good question. Very good question. If you see what they're bombarding me here. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. I'm in my life. Two guys that came to see the 40. I'm in my life since. We have a genuine Yoruba. I see. Who are you doing to tell them? My God, that is so cool. Okay, two hundred and sixty people around here. From Hi, B O B. One family. That is impressive. I am impressed. I have to okay. say that maybe they learned it from me. <laughs> <laughs> because we confront fire with even a bigger fire. We know there are good Yoruba people. I have not said this in public before, but I will say it today here in Canada because you are a distinguished audience, I must say. IPOB attended the last birthday of Pa Aya Debanjo and we gave him a gift. We acknowledge genuine Yoruba leaders who are consistent. 
consistency. We banter sometimes, you know, when Yoruba, some of them say we are Biafra, you don't expect them to be quiet. They go after them. And I hope that one day we'll be very good neighbors with the Yorubas. Because we have a lot to share together. In Oduduwa and also in Biafra, but not in Nigeria. Are you following me? Yes, not in Nigeria. You know, in the Bible, Abraham said to Lot, we are of the same blood. But your goat is eating the grass of my sheep. <laughs> and my cow is eating the grass of your other little cow. So to avoid problem, eh? you take right or you take left, let me go the other way. Isn't it? FFK is my is my in-law. Ayo is a darling of Biafra. If you ask me, they will tell you. But this IPOB has been trained to be vicious. Because we don't know where our enemies are coming from. So the best form of defense is to attack. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, please, Dr. Emmanuel Anoche here, please. Dr. Emmanuel Anoche. I understand clearly that the House of Fulani did not defeat the uh, through the conventional war. But, and that was why they invented divisive means. And that was what we got the defeated here. And we call it saboteur. Now, they have started again to use that system to fight their food by dividing us. My question is this, what are you doing or what are we doing to unite each and every group their own group? Because I know that there are many and through what I am seeing in social media, I don't think there is unity among them. So my question is, what are we doing to unite them? Because we are fighting a common enemy, and when we are united to fight this common enemy, within a couple of weeks, they are defeated. Thank you. Thank you. He said there are many pro Biafra groups. And I'm sure by next week, maybe we might have another four join the existing ranks. There is something that is wrong with us, which we must cure ourselves of. You know, we come from a very competitive culture, where if I hear that you're in car importing business, I join. Is that correct? So when people come and say they are praying for Nam the Kano Future and for, for IPOB, there are people who want people to also pray for them. Eh? And if by starting a pro Biafra group is the way to accomplish that, then so be it. What is the motive of these people? 
where are we going to stop? You have four people drinking in a beer panel. They contribute money, maybe 4,600 naira. They see a journalist with bathroom slippers working. You know, they don't pay them. And you call the journalist and you, out of the 4,500, you give him 4,000. Say, please write a press statement. We are calling for this and we are calling for that. Our name is Biafra Liberation Council. And they write. And then you think there is a new pro Biafra group. Also for Manhattan, no? Four. Four people. Are you following what I'm saying? Everybody is important, yes. But IPOB is puritanical. Super. We are uncompromisable. Can you live with that discipline? That is the issue. We don't want you to come in, as some people have done. Uh, I mentioned their names on Radio Biafra, and the next day they receive uh, a lot. And they start talking rubbish. That's why I don't praise people anymore. Because I praise somebody and they go and collect money and start to talk nonsense. There are no pro Biafra. There's a bunch of people online with fake accounts talking rubbish. If you say you're a pro Biafra group, who is your leader? Let that leader come to Canada. Let me see people will pay to see him or her. Are you following what I'm saying? If you're a pro Biafra group, what have you done? Is it pro Biafra on Facebook? How is it pro Biafra on Facebook? We are dying on the ground. We are fighting for any hate men. On the ground. What have you done? As a pro Biafra group, I ask. If not to be informant to the zoo. That is why we are formidable. That is why we are unbreakable. IPOB is unbreakable. When we say one family, we mean it. IPOB! One family! I don't know whether people uh, read Obasanjo's statement. He said that Nigeria is being fulanized and Islamized. But he did say something. He said the only people, the only people that are prepared and seem to be safe is the Eastern Nigeria. And why is that? And why is that? Because we have soldiers on the ground. You people don't know what we do. But every vigilante is laced with IPOB people. And when they finally see, come to any community, there are people there waiting for them. So we are protecting you. Oh. The next person is Etel Obi Ezekiah. Etel Obi Ezekiah. IPOB. IPOB. I'm privileged to see you in person today, our manike. Chukwu kiki abiyama, ge chebagi, ge ge bugi. Nini la inalo? Chukwu bibi, chukwu kiki abiyama, ge nyaye, iki kwe, ije merinde. Right. <laughs> One love. My question this evening is like the last uh, speaker said, the previous one. He said we are have we have a lot of uh, saboteurs. And uh, my question is, we have all these governors in the east. What are we going to do? Then, so that this cause of Biafra will be achieved. It's, uh, most of the governors that you have 
We are planted by the Fulani Caliphate to serve them. And that move started since 1976. Mbappe was an aberration. They missed him and Mwobudu then. But you see, over the years, they managed to get Mwobudu as well. Only Mbappe stood very firm till his death, which is why we shall always honor him. He was a good man. He fought in the Biafran War, if you don't know, and became a governor. You can see the love of his people flowing through him. All these chaps you are seeing, Hopus Odemma, 419 Lagos, Sudo Ocean Lagos. You don't know that before? Or is it a room? I'm robber, highway robber in Benin. These are the people they are bringing for you to be your governors. If he wants to be governor, I can take him to the north. He will do rank and then lie down for one smelly idiot, illiterate. And they And they will say he's an evil leader. You know, that's how the leaders emerge. Okoro Kumeme, red cap. And with uh, you know, walking stick and like, on up by the And he, there you have an evil leader. When Fulani are attacking his village, and you ask him, what do you have to say? He will say, we should not do anything to disturb the peace. <laughs> These governors, we are going to do to them exactly what Mossad did to Nazi officers. Go and read the textbooks, you see what happened to them. Yes. There will be no forgiveness. Yes. They can do every amount of stretchery and sabo they like. They can never stop Biafra from coming. And when Biafra comes, they will not only pay for it, their families will pay and there will be no pity. Yes. Oh, so you think they will kill us at some point? Massacre us in our bank, and then we forgive everybody like that. Cap nonsense. We won't forgive anybody. That's right. Uh, Habadike, the, the first time you came during your first missionary journey. There's a man called Uche Zuma, Uche Mami. He hosted you in, your, in his house and you broadcast for seven days. Uche is here today. You ask after him when we're in the hotel. You said, Where is my friend Uche? And he wants to ask you a question, Uche. You've been to Israel for a while. Just you might not share with you whatever you are not able to know. We know that you have a. We used to have a defense force. Is this the all? Because let me don't have anything to say. And they're uh, saying. Tia no no. Tia no no. Yeah. There are areas that, uh, that I wanted to I wanted to mention that they've been touched on already. Because you have people claiming to be evil leaders. They make all chances in Abuja and there's no repercussion. And what are we doing about that? And how are we going to checkmate these people? I want to be and uh, precisely this
Thank you very much, Jay. Um, when I was in Canada last time, he kindly hosted me with his beautiful wife and children. I, and when I came into Canada, I asked after him. Me, he knows I'm my guy, but I bought. I will answer your question this way. You know, Igbo men gossip a lot. It's the truth, I'm being honest with you. Igbo men gossip more than the women. And, um, and that is why every meeting, every Igbo meeting in the world headed by a man they have a faction inside it. They check all the women groups all over the world. They are one and intact. If our mothers were gossiping in 1929, they wouldn't afford the white man in our back. Because the men, I got a ban on the Which is a good friend of mine. And I hope he has not fallen victim to gossip. Come on, you can help people. Defense fund, defense fund. How many of you here paid defense fund? Yeah. Raise your hand up. That's the point. They're asking the for Nobody paid. Only few people. So, people are asking me for the first phone in Canada. We are only one person paid. Actually, we are My brother, how much did you pay? I paid 350. Somebody here paid 450 euro. <laughs> Husband and the wife, 450 euro. I paid 350 euro. Okay. Who else? Right. Who else paid? Who else? Nobody. There's two people. Why are you ask defense phone? Uh, that's the point. Oh, say it again. But if you are reading about defense phone, you will think the whole world contributed. They asked me about our transmitter. Uche, my dear brother, he's an Omarian. Tell them about the transmitter, and today the transmitter is in Abuja with DSS. The reason why those that feed Uche gossip do that is because they want me to reveal the source of our strength that our enemies may know. So if I come here the way I would normally have behaved before, to say, oh, this is our defense fund, is in this account, is this much, then the zoo will not only look for it, they will calculate the amount of weapons we can buy with it, and they will buy four times that amount to wait for us. Simple common sense. I don't want to embarrass our people by telling the world how much is in the defense fund. He did to be honest with me. So it's embarrassing to actually say it. And all those people that gossip to you, ask them to produce their receipt with which they paid defense fund. The answer is zero. They never paid. But because we love gossiping, we can do And I come go do you know why they ask you about the first one? Do you know why? They want to discourage you from contributing towards IPOB. If they poison your mind, you stop contributing, this movement will collapse. And then they will say, oh, we told you. They cannot get you Biafra. But I know them very well. Because if you mess up in IPOB, I will dismiss you. Never to come back. I asked him a for two weeks and I think three and a half days. I think it's about two weeks. 
or eight days for a master. As it is eight days. Or more. <laughs> the same people that leaked stole my phone and published the video of me and my beautiful wife, thinking that people will hate me. People then started posting pictures of themselves and their wives and the other way. Stop listening to gossip. And when you gossip is for people without plan and without any project. We are IPOB. Anything I say I'm going to do, I do it. Do you think Israel will take me seriously if I come out and say to the world we have XYZ amount of money in our defense fund? Huh? Do you know how many award cars that uh, Canada has? I'm on vehicle. Do you know? No, do you know? I'm on cars and I'm on and you don't even know how much. But you want me to tell you how much you have in the defense fund? Oh no, we'll see. Hey, you you get a job here? I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm family. The next person is Honorable Achon Humphrey. No? You have a great number. Oh, well, oh, well, eh? uh, uh, thank you, uh, as a chicken. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here, Prince Nandi Kano. Uh, you are a very smart student of history. I know that in every struggle, there are stages. So, what is the stage of this struggle at this moment? And you know that the most powerful weapon in war is hunger. I just got back last night from my village, and hunger is driving our people into the camp of our enemies. Oh my God. The youth, they are losing the steam of IPOP struggle because they are hungry. At this stage, I expect IPOP to start formulating economic policies that will not make our youth depend on the crumbs coming from these dirty governors. I expect at this moment that IPOP will be doing what we're doing before the Biafran war, refining our oils, having a robust healthcare system. At this time, I would also like to suggest, let us bring back pearls by moonlight. The younger generation, they do not understand much about what you're doing. Let us bring back pearls by moonlight before they go to bed. We'll read them stories, we'll get around the uh, fire and tell them what you are doing. This is how this struggle will go to the next level and we'll get to where we're going. Thank you. He said that people are hungry and what are we doing about it? My dear brother, welcome your question, by the way. I went to Israel. As part of the negotiations and discussions with certain people in Israel, we are arranging to get our people, our young people, meaningfully employed back home by becoming the food basket of not just Biafra land or the wider zoo that our neighbors, but all of West Africa. I went to Israel and I negotiated. I came on radio and announced it. Now we need farmland to start doing some very wonderful things. You know what they did? For those asking me about defense fund. Ordinary agriculture. Not defense fund, agriculture and get a plant, tomatoes. And I know all these little, little things. Okay, Z Bazu went and visited the Israeli. Yes, um, 
Okay, so he has a went to his that terrorist. When you can partner with Abia, are you listening? Yes. Because any announcement I make in the public, the zoo will send one of their idiots to go and walk against it. That is why we don't announce everything in public anymore. Understand this very well. And since that time, the Red Jersey also went to the Israeli embassy. Has anything happened? And happened? It's just to spoil it. Oh my goodness. He asked me the phase we are in right now. And I call it the phase of gathering. Not in the Pentecostal church sense, please. This very seed that was planted in 2012, 13, 14, 15, through my incarceration and all we've been through, now we are gathering people together to assign roles and duties to go into the next phase. If we can get people here in this hall to lobby, to protest, to rally, to disturb the authorities in this very Canada, then we would have gone a long way. But if you do nothing here, nothing is going to happen. I understand this very well. And regarding Tales by Moonlight, I'm sure that if we're running around the fire and discussing, Dave Umahi will send the army to go and kill everyone. That's the problem. Then we have to take care of their kids, or even the kids, we have to bury them, we have to take care of everybody, and it costs money. And then somebody will come on air and ask me, all that dues we are paying, what are we doing with it? That now that people are in prison, nobody has, is asking me how we're going to bring them out. Nobody is asking me how do we sustain age of four and his crew to do their work. I do the next person is uh, Anna Ayo Okore. Are you here? IPOB, IPOB, every one of us here today, if I'm speaking the minds of everybody, admire you, sir. Keep on fighting, they're behind you. My question is this. Uh, during your incarceration in Nigeria, and let me make this clear, the fear of Nam the Kalo, Kano, is the beginning of wisdom for Buhari. Buhari went, or well, Buhari there, went on his knees. I believe there must have been some efforts to meet with you because I tell you that we are scared and they are still scared. Was there at any point, and this is a follow up to a question somebody asked before about negotiation, was there at any point that you know the Buhari or his agents uh, met with you? And if they did, were their conditions that they gave you, that you refused. Very straightforward question, thank you. Yes, on various occasions, they sent people to me. And I said before I speak to them, I can also give them my conditions, which I know they couldn't meet, it's not possible for them to meet it. And I did it deliberately. I don't want to speak to them. They sent all Jews or Carol to come to me. First to my parents. My father said no. My mother said no. 
that where I stand is where they stand in life or in death. <laughs> and, um, they came to prison. I was from, even from DSS uh, dungeon. The promises came. The vice president, anything you want. You have a very beautiful wife. You better go and enjoy her than being in prison. Wow. Anything you want. And I said no. That what I want is a referendum to determine if you good people want to be part of the zoo or part of Nigeria or part of Biafra. Choose one, zoo or Biafra. They said no. And Sibajo tried to make contact. When I came out, I don't know if I've told this story before actually. And uh, Ahaneze hijacked it. I went to see Mia Wode in his house. We sat down, had lunch together. And I told him what my conditions were to lift the boycott in Anambra State, which they couldn't meet. And I said to Wode very simply, go to Abuja and tell these people that these are what our people are asking for. I said to him, go and bring us something. Not for me, for everybody. He went there and started negotiating for a ministerial position oh for one of the children. I'm telling you what I'm telling you is fact, ask him. Somebody asked him, but you people are being called to Asorok because of Onam the Kano. Why didn't you tell him that you're going to Asorok? He said it is for Igbo leaders. And, and once the powers that be knew that he hadn't IPOB support, they just gave them five million naira for transport and dismissed them. Oh my goodness. Had any award to remain with me. When the governors called me, I told them the same thing in front of Professor Ben Wabezi. They said, oh, but Wado, Saludo, Premad is upstairs. Do, 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 they, do I want them to come? I said, no. Government has said, The former DSS director came with his bags of money in euros, in white sacks to bribe. Ask anybody working in the government house in the moon. I said, no, I don't want to see them. Not because I want to be the only cock crowing, no. Because of consistency. Can you last? When you're tempted, are you going to succumb? Can you sustain this very effort we're making? So they have come. And I gave them my conditions which they can never meet. Open Wari Seaport, open Iwacha Seaport, open Calabas Seaport. Make any good international airport where we can fly to US and come in at will. Build the Gwacha Enugu on Asia Enugu Express Road. Complete second Niger Bridge. Are these things difficult? No. no. As I'm telling you this, go and ask them in Asaroki if your friends there. They have the piece of paper I gave to them. They ran away. Because some evil men were busy gossiping saying if you allow him when he finishes fighting nigeria he will come here and fight us and kill all of us oh that's God. what they said and you know what another thing they said they told every even billionaire around the world that nobody should give me one dime ask them that if you give him none they can no money he will go and buy weapons that nobody should give me anything That we are here by the grace of Elohim, not by any of our strength, to be honest with you. Any day we are serious, the world will know. How do you want Canada to regard the Biafra referendum or even USA? The people that the ambassador knows are the governors, or maybe uh, Hanese. Did you people not hear that the British government went to Biafra and when I was in prison? Oh my goodness. The British High Commissioner was storing everywhere. When they wanted to kill me, 
went to Obi of it and asked him, what do we do to numb the canoe? That one said you can kill him if you want. Jesus. They went to Achishia. Achishia told him you can never touch him. If you touch him, this place will burn. How many times has the U.S. government been to Enugu? They go to Ohaneze. I saw... I don't, I don't want to say it. Hey. They went to Ohaneze and the governors. They asked them, what do you want? Oh, leave those rascals. Leave them. Miscreants. We want restructuring. What they are asking for is untenable. But the same man said if there is no restructuring, they'll join IPOB to do Biafra, isn't it? Did he complete what he said? Is he doing what he said he's going to do? And you want me to work with these people? I say know everything I do, I say it in the open. Not gossip. And those that spoke to Uche, I am going to Chicago to broadcast live to the whole world and tell them they're in trouble. I've told them Nayanya, every dime they contributed to IPOB will be announced for the world to hear. Tell them there'll be no hiding place for gossipers, even as much as I'm concerned. Because I know what I've committed to this very movement. Not that I'll become Biafra president. No. So that I can take Nemeka and then I came back to the land of his ancestors. To this, that same land that Chuko Kabiyama said, you people must be here. And then my wife, I'm Mariano. I am fighting for Biafra that we may be free. Thank you. It was just uh, last week that Ndamwood was <laughs> responding to 100 billion given to the Fulani Hillsmen. And he said, these people go around with their guns killing people. And you didn't do anything. You turned around armless civilians that are not covering their face. They're just agitating for a referendum. You call them terrorists. Isn't he a wellers or lamentations? They're just thinking out loud. This man understands that our, the Biafrans are divided. I used to tell someone, I said, the very first day they saw Ohamadike, Eastern Senators drove into the East. The whole Nigeria nearly had a heart attack. Because this young man here, for the first time, got the Senators, and all the powers in the East Turkey. That's what they don't want to see. And they ended up nearly killing him because it's the person that is driving the Biafrans to where they should be. But like you always said, we are resolute. We will continue to march forward. IPOB! 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 The next question is coming from Chigozie Agobata. Are you here? IPOB. IPOB. Now you are my guinea pig again. Go ahead, go. We don't get dragging. Chuko get buzzing. Ni chegi ni le. Chuko kati ama. Gaba kume. He said, my question is this. When I came here, I was marveled, looking at the people that I know that here for the purpose of IPOD. And the people of Biafra. I want to ask you, if we live here, are you committed? You are asking the Supreme Leader this question over and over for hours and ask the question. Now I want to throw this question to the floor here. Look at me, everyone. See, let me tell you, I know where I came from. You know my name. Only few of you can even know me. On September 2017, 
when the happening, the, the that happening happening uh, uh, at the state, I can recall my brother over there, Papa C, and Timu Kafo, and many uh, nine, uh, um, the elder. So we gather together under one IPOB. But that makes me to know we have many IPOB that we are still talking about today. I want to know this division as Igwe Nweheze. But Igwe Nweheze. But now I want you to go as Igwe Nweheze. Igwe Nweheze. But Igwe Nweheze. My question is, I asked it before, if we live now, if we pay that $20, it seems like it's too much. We pay the $20, it seems like it's too small. Could you believe that this number of people here, we pay $20 every month just for a sacrifice? Do you know what it will be served for this IPOB in Canada? We went to Ottawa. I have it here. The reason I didn't display it was the time they are tackling people on for social media. My wife was there. The house was like 200 people. But when the call came to go to Ottawa for protest, everybody disappeared. And we are gathered here, we are IPOB. Where do you belong to? Show example and let's lead. God bless you. Ahmadike, um, there's one of us, he has some artistic talent. And there's a, a very unique picture he would like to present to you. That was a, a picture where you were in court. And I'm calling on Frank Post to please. Can you clap for him, please? IPOB one family. IPOB one family. One family. IPOB. Oh, Madike, I'm happy to see you today. I thank you for what you have been doing for us and what you continue doing for us. May you keep blessing you. I have something for you. And this thing I'm giving you, when I look at this picture, it inspires me a lot. Thank you so much. Tell him will not judge me. Can we see the picture, please? What is written there is the lion of Biafra rules in the courts. You cannot accuse me in the open and try me in secret. You cannot be killing my people and want to try me in secret. You are mad. <laughs> As uh, we're taking the next question on Hamadike, there are uh, Ottawa family. It's like four hours from here, that's the capital of Canada. They were not able to be with us yesterday, but they are today. If you don't mind, they'd like to take a piece of you back to Ottawa. Ottawa people, can you please come, please? People from Capital. One family. One family. One family. One family. One family. Can you people come close so that the picture will be taken so that when you go to Ottawa, you tell them you met the Hamadika of it, Biafra Land. Thank you, Ottawa people. God bless you. A safe journey where you return. When you go show your families that you shook his hand, the simple man. 
when you see him you think he's so aggressive but he's really a very mellow guy he told me that everybody that sacrificed to this very struggle must be recognized and that's what we're doing tonight ladies and gentlemen we're going to be leaving here by 11. the police crews are there and the security people will be leaving by 11. so we're very close to the closing time so and we will take just very more few questions and i'm going to ask uh, dr chidi wanyang uh, for two minutes please not more than two minutes Hamadike was SEC candidate um, for Enugu State. I already told you yeah, how much SEC candidate I have for you for Enugu State. The problem, because I am one of the die-hard believers in the Igbo community. We have done our best. We have sacrificed for our community. When I was the president of Nigerian Canadian Association here, and we were protesting against uh, the, 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 the ills that, that was going on. I went to about three organizations that were Biafra organizations, and I donated money in all of these places. My problem is this. I want you, in the presence of Igbo people here this night, to tell us who are the authentic and recognized group that you guys identify with. I want to hear it from your mouth. That's just what I want to see because every time we step out of here, before tomorrow, before tomorrow you're going to see people public. I was actually taken out of uh, the Nigerian Canadian group today because I was trying to post something and I was the former president and I know why they took me out because of our very people here. So I want you to address our people. So that when you leave, we will know the people that we are, that when we are working with them, we know that they are transmitting to you directly. Thank you very much. Transmission, transmission. Yeah. <laughs> I feel One family. family. It is very, very distressing that our brother, who is the um, or who was the immediate past president of um, Zoo Group here, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have the lives of Okorawosa and all the rest of them. There is also uh, some Okorawosas in Canada. You will have them everywhere. There are three men that they get wins in the north sometime in the past. So they'll be there always. But in terms of, can you stand up, uh, Tim? That's our coordinator, the law of Canada. And where is our, that's the Ontario coordinator as well. That is also our general secretary. If you want to deal with IPOB in Canada, these are the people you'll be dealing with. If you're dealing with them, then you're dealing with me. Anything outside team is not authentic. Please, understand this very, very clearly. And our people who are here, Sometimes uh, it's becoming very, very embarrassing the way some of us behave, to be honest. Very embarrassing. The progress of our people is the responsibility of each and every one of us here. Sometimes after the libation and the breaking of Kolonot, some of you don't know that sharing of Kolonot is an oath. Yes. Do you know that? Yes. People don't understand it. The reason why you give somebody Kolonot in your house, you break and you eat, is that to reassure that person that no harm can
can befall him or her. Then your hands are clean. But we turn our culture upside down. Maybe because I grew up in the village. We never had them on a town. They turn a town. Because if you grew up in the village, you understand the meaning of camaraderie. Working with people and trying to deliver a particular goal or result. Those that grew up in the township, Hachulewi. I want us to turn a new leaf. Let it be said that IPOB came into Canada and we became a new people. Because the story of Biafra and IPOB will not be complete. With what I've seen today, we are without Canada in it. And that means that all of you will partake in it. Some of you think that when Biafra comes, maybe it will be leadership only. Nobody who is a leader in IPOB will serve when Biafra comes. Biafran people will elect people that will serve them. One was asking me, what is your structure? I said, your structure, what? I said, what is your structure? Structure of a commanding on you, see, can never get in here. You let him know what you're doing. We are here to serve you, and you are here to also serve Biafra. I'm be happy. One family. We will be moving faster. And there are people, family members that were not in our meeting yesterday, like Prince, like uh, Martin. Can you please come forward? Uh, uh, or Hamadika will just take a quick picture with you. And then we make closing remarks and then go. Mm. While that is going on, I want to remind you there are people that have been coming to us and we'll be giving them letters for immigration. All of them are successful. Even though Nigerian government said IPOB is a terrorist organization, Canada said no. They do recognize that people have been running away from being hurt by a repressive government. What we do not want is people coming to beg us, we are under oath not to abuse those letters that we sent to government. If you are not a member of IPOB, we will not give you a letter. So if you want to join IPOB, if you are not an IPOB member before, once you set your foot in Canada, you go and register with your closest IPOB office, the nearest province. Are they ready, Martin? Are, are they ready? Yes. Come on, come, come. Quickly, one second. That's it. Come on, come on. Picture. Go back, right? Yeah, just them. Go back. Hurry up, hurry up.